On March 17th, another four states will go to the polls. With 219 delegates up for grabs, Florida will be the biggest prize of the evening. Surveys show Joe Biden has a sizable lead in the state. A decisive win there could be another huge feather in his cap. Who ends up winning in Florida is going to essentially, I think, uh, be the final nail, so to speak, in the coffin of the Democratic primary season. And we'll be shifting quickly thereafter, I imagine, uh, to a presumptive nominee and a uh, one-person race versus Donald Trump, which I think uh, many Americans are eager to begin. But as the younger generations of this country continue in very strong numbers to support our campaign. While no question Bernie Sanders will do well with younger voters in the Sunshine State, Florida is made up mostly of an older and diverse electorate, where many of the Democratic voters have a deep allegiance to the Obama administration, which, of course, bodes well for Joe Biden. That that legacy is going to certainly, I think, help him with uh, minority voters and much of the Obama coalition that exists in states like Florida uh, that are very multicultural and very diverse. Yet, despite whoever wins the Democratic presidential nomination, either candidate will likely face a very tough battle in the general election. It's the ultimate swing state with only slightly more registered Democrats than Republicans, but it tends to go either way in presidential elections. President Trump won the state in 2016 and has since become an official resident there. His positive job performance numbers run in the high 40s. But political observers say it would be Joe Biden who might be best suited to face the incumbent president in Florida, especially given his path of victories in the primaries so far. I mean, he's won every state in the South. Uh, Florida is in the South. Uh, and uh, he's won most areas that are uh, pluralistic in terms of their different kinds of diversity.